Welcome back to the GSMC Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Sam Menzi, and we are back for our second segment. Now, before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read on the air, please use the link at gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And we're going to go back to our second segment here, which is talking about the National League games of yesterday. Of course, we did have a segment on the American League games, as usual. So, yeah, we'll be uh, talking about this, and we'll uh, start it off with uh, Mets and Cardinals. A really exciting game here. Cardinals had taken uh, the first two games of the series. The Mets were looking to bounce back a little bit, you know, now losing two series in a row after that great win against the Dodgers. You know, they're kind of looking to get the vibes right, quote-unquote, so... uh, you know, it would open up with the top of the fifth, a Michael Ciani RBI sacrifice bunt uh, with a man on third scoring Mason Wynn. So really strong uh, job there by Ciani. You know, he knows he is strong suit isn't hitting the ball. So he uses speed to leg out a single and get a RBI with the bases loaded. So really nice job there. Bottom of the sixth, Francisco Lindor would tie up the game with a solo home run, his fifth of the year to make it 1-1. You know, we know how much Lindor has been struggling this year with the bat, so really strong uh, home run there to tie up the game. Top of the 11th, Brendan Donovan. We're going to extras now. Top of the 10th for both teams. Uh, the 10th inning for both teams would not yield any runs. In the top of the 11th, Brendan Donovan would hit an RBI single to make it 2-1 St. Louis uh, to, give the, to give the lead for uh, for them, obviously. Bottom of the 11th, Harrison Bader would hit an RBI single to make two, uh, two score GJ Stewart to make it two to two on a on, with two strikes on count, and you know one more strike would have won the game for St. Louis. So really nice job by there for Bader to come in clutch against his former team and tie up the game. Then the big blow would come in the bottom of the 11th, a Mark Viento so a two run home run, his first of the season in back in the MLB, a walk off and would win the game for the Mets. So Viento's had a really really interesting season. You know, got his job stolen by J.D. Martinez. Got sent down after he expected to be the starting D.H. for the team all camp. So it's been really tough, but, you know, showed a lot of heart overcoming that adversity in hitting the walk-off home run for the for the Mets against the Cardinals. And the Mets needed this win, so a really nice job by him. You know, he's in the lineup again today, so obviously he's, not, uh, he's, he's doing this for a reason, and the Mets are seeing it. So, uh, yeah, great job for him. For the Mets, they had on the mound Jose Quintana, who was absolutely brilliant. Eight innings pitched, three hits, an earned run, a walk, and three strikeouts, a 3 4 8 ERA in the season. Really, really great start by him. I mean, Mets pitcher hadn't touched the seventh inning before the start, and he went eight against his former team as well, so really great job there. The Cardinals had on the mound Lance Lynn. He went five innings pitched, five hits, an earned run, three walks, three strikeouts, 2 6 4 ERA on the season. So, really strong start there. So, good win by the Mets. You know, they still did lose the series, but they're playing the Cubs now four games at home. I think if they can take three out of four, they'll they'll get everything um, right. You know, they're coming off a lot of momentum off that after that walk-off win. So, really nice job. Next game we have is going to be Braves and Athletics. Tops of, uh, sorry, Braves and Guardians. I don't know why I said Athletics. Top, uh, sorry. Uh, that is, I just did that game, so I, uh, I apologize about that. Uh, going back to the National League which is going to be, oh, sorry, no, it is Braves and Guardians, okay, uh, sorry, got a little, uh, yeah, uh, top of the third, Andre Ximenez would hit an RBI single to make it one nothing Cleveland, then in the top of the fifth, he would steal second base to score Brian Rokikio, um, and a wild pitch by Bryce Elder would score Rokikio, so make it 2 nothing Cleveland, bottom of the fifth, Chadwick Trump would get a run on the board for Atlanta, making it 2-1, and then at the top of the seven, Stephen Kwan would hit a RBI single to make a 3-1. to one. Ozzie Albies would hit an RBI double to make a 3-2. And a Matt Olson RBI single would tie it up at three in the bottom of the eighth. Top of the tenth, Austin Riley would hit a walk-off for the Braves, hitting an RBI single to, to center fielder Tyler Freeman to score Ronald Acuna Jr. So a really nice walk-off win by the Braves. You know, Guardians have exceeded a lot of expectations and become one of the best teams in baseball. So I think it's a really solid win by the Braves to beat this Guardian team who has been so great this season and they're one win away already from 20 wins on the season. They had on the mound Bryce Elder who went five and a third innings pitched, four hits, two earned runs, four walks and two strikeouts, one five zero ERA on the season. For the Guardians they had on the mound, uh, sorry, they had on the mound Ben Lively who went four and a third innings pitched, four hits and earned run, two walks and five strikeouts, two three ERA on the season. So really strong start there. Next start we next game we have here is going to be 
Nationals and Marlins. A really exciting game. You know, two really awful teams, but game still turned out uh, very interesting. Bottom of the first, Jazz Chisholm would open up the game with a grand slam, his third of the year, third home run of the year, to make it 4 nothing Miami. What a great start by him. Vidal Brujan, the former Ray, would hit an RBI triple to make it 5 nothing, And Nick Fortes would hit an RBI single to make it 6 nothing Miami, just like that in the bottom of the first. So great job there by this offense. New Marlin Emmanuel Rivera would hit an RBI double to make it 7 nothing Miami. And on the top of the fourth, Jacob Young would hit an RBI double to make it 7-1. to C.J. Abrams would hit a double to make it 7-3. to And a Nick Senzel two-run two run home run to make it 7-5 to Miami. Just like that, the Nationals were within two runs of the game. Two runs of the leads. Really strong top of the fourth by them. And then on the top of the fifth, Jacob Young with an RBI single to score. Uh, Trey Lips going to make it 7-6. to six. And then Nick sends out with the big blow, a three-run home run to make it 9-7 to seven Washington and complete the comeback. A great job by the, by the national team. Trey Lips going with steal second base, which would cause Iltamar Vargas to steal home. A successful double steal would make it 10-7 to seven Washington. Tim Anderson with an RBI double to make it 10-8. to eight. And a Jesus Sanchez RBI single would make it 10-9. to nine. So the Marlins would attempt to come back a little bit, but it would be thwarted as in the top of the 8th. A wild pitch by Brian Hoeing would score Trey Lipscomb to make it 11-9. And Jacob Young with an RBI single to make it 12-9. Washington, really, really solid game there for Washington. And just a great start. Great game for them. Coming back against this Marlins team, you know, they're really young. They have a lot going for them. So I think it was a, it's a really big positive when you can get a win like this for this young team. They had on the mound Patrick Corbin, who was, of course, as we know of, awful. Four innings pitched, eight hits, seven runs, four earned, two walks, four strikeouts, 6 a 2 way array in the season. As we know of, Corbin is one of the worst contracts in baseball by most people. Um, personally, I don't think it because I think he did a job righty, which was win the World Series. So I think he's kind of in the clear for the rest of his contract. But he's only got one year left. It opens up a lot of money for the Nationals this offseason. I expect him to get a lot of good players and improve this young team. So you only got a few starts left with the Nationals fans. Be happy. Marlins had on the mound Ryan Weathers, who went four innings pitched, five hits, six earned runs, three walks, three strikeouts. It's had an up and down season so far. I think this start kind of shows a lot of what his season has been. Just okay, nothing too crazy, just decent. So an okay start by him, but nothing, uh, nothing too extraordinary. Next game we have is going to be Pirates and Giants. Scoring would open up in the bottom of the third with a Tyro Estrada solo home run. Then a Mike Yastrzemski solo home run would make it 2-0 and 3-0 with a Lamont Way Jr. sacrifice fly to score Tyler Fitzgerald. Top of the fifth, Jared Triola would ground out to make it 3-1, and he would hit an RBI single in the top of the ninth to make it 3-2, but they would not score after that and would end up losing. With the Pirates, they had on the mound Jared Jones, who was phenomenal again. Five innings pitch, six hits, three earned runs, one walk, three strikeouts. He's had such an amazing start to the season so far. is proving to be a big part of the Pirates' future and has been a really good player. For the Giants, they had on the mound Keaton Wynn. He went six innings pitch, three hits, an earned run, a walk, and five strikeouts, a 3.18 ERA on the season. Really, really strong start by him. I thought he would be one of the breakout players in, of the season so far, and he's not proven me wrong. Been really, really solid. Next uh, next game we have here is going to be Diamondbacks and Mariners, a uh, battle of two West Coast teams. Top of the Bottom of the first scoring would open up with a Josh Rojas solo home run, his third of the year, and a little bit of a revenge home run as the D Diamondbacks did trade him last year, so nice job there for him. Top of the second, Christian Walker would hit a solo shot to make it 1-1. And in the bottom of the third, Julio Rodriguez would hit a sacrifice flop, would hit an RBI single to make it 2-1. At the top of the seventh, A. Eugenio Suarez went an RBI double to make it two to two, and at the top of the eighth, Cattell Marte went an RBI double to make it three two, and the uh, Diamondbacks would end up winning this game three to two. So, really solid win there by them. You know they haven't been the best this season, only being at thirteen, only being at twelve and sixteen before this game. But you know, really strong win there. And uh, I think when you ever you beat a team you made a big trade with or a team that is kind of associated with you, I think it's something that is a really big positive. Dimebacks had on the mound Brandon Fott, who went six innings pitched, five hits, two run runs, no walks, 11 strikeouts. When Fott is working, he is a really, really great pitcher, has some great stuff, and I really am looking forward to watching his career develop. I think he can be a really, really great pitcher. For the Mariners, they had on the mound Logan Gilbert. He went six and a third innings pitched, giving him four hits, two run runs, a walk, and nine strikeouts, a 2.03 ERA on the season. Really, really strong start by him there. 
has been really, really great this season, and uh, his control has just his control is just amazing. That's really been um, his, the thing he's known for throughout his career, and it has been really, really great. Next game we have is going to be Phillies and Padres. Scoring would open up in the top of the second with a Rice and Stott two-run home run to make it 2 nothing, And in the bottom of the third, Fernando Tatis Jr. with an RBI double to make it 2-1, to one, getting a run on the board for the Padres. J- Jake Cronenworth would hit a two-run shot to make it 3-2. to two, And in the top of the fourth, Bryce and Stott would hit a two-run home run to make it 4-3 to three, Philly. Top of the sixth, JT Romuto would make it 6-3. to three, And again, would make it 7-3 to three with a RBI single. Bottom of the seventh, Luis Campusano would hit a three-run home run to get the Padres within one, seven to six. So the catchers on both teams would come in clutch. But in the top of the eighth, the Phillies would get some more insurance runs with a Johan Rojas RBI double to make it eight to six, and they would end up winning the game at that score. Padres had on the mound Michael King, who went five and third innings pitched, six hits, six run runs, three walks, six strikeouts. Has really not been good since coming to the Padres. If he doesn't keep this up, I think we could look at the Soto to the Yankees trade as one of the best in baseball history for the Yankees. So, you know, it might be overreacting a little bit, but I think Michael King really needs to step it up. Phillies had on the mound Taiwan Walker, who went six and a third innings pitched, eight hits, six run runs, two walks, four strikeouts in his first start back from the injured list. You know, um, yes, he's getting paid a lot of money, but I think when you look at the overall depth of this Phillies rotation, I think Spencer Turnbull is clearly a better option. And I think that Taiwan Walker might lose his starting his role in the rotation soon, even though he is getting paid all this money. It is going to be something that is very interesting to watch. The last game we have is going to be Cubs and Red Sox, two teams that did make a trade over the weekend, which we'll be talking about in our last segment. Bottom of the first, Connor Wong with an RBI single to make a one nothing Boston, and then would hit another RBI single in the bottom of the third to make a 2 nothing. so nice job by him. Bottom of the sixth, Jaron Duran with an RBI triple to make it 4 nothing. Top of the seventh, though, Matt Mervis would get a run on the board for the Cubs, making it 4-1. to one. A Mike Talkman three-run home run in the top of the eighth would tie up the game, making it 4-4. Four to four. A great moment for Talkman. Um, has really found himself with the Cubs, and this might be a shining moment. A three-run home run to tie up the game in the eighth against this Red Sox team. Really great job there. Bottom of the ninth, unfortunately, Tyler O'Neill would hit a RBI single to make it 5-4 Boston and win the game on a walk-off for them. So, as much as it was a really great moment for this Cubs team, the Red Sox would end up winning. Red Sox had on the mound Tanner Houck, who went 6-2 and two thirds innings pitch, giving them 4 hits, an earned run, no walks, and 9 strikeouts, a 1-6 ERA on the season. The Cubs had on the mound Hayden Wisniewski. He won 4 innings pitched, 5 hits, 2, two runs, 1 earned, 1 walk, 3 strikeouts, and no home runs, a .87 ERA on the season. Has been really good since coming up. Again, you'd like to see him go deeper into games, but over 10 innings pitch, he has only a .87 ERA in the season, so really great job there. All right, so that is it for our third segment of the second segment of the day today. We're moving on to our third segment, which is going to be talking about um, the Friday and Saturday games. You know, I didn't have a chance to recap these as I'm not on stream over the weekend, of course. So, yeah, we'll be talking about those um, after the break. So thanks, and see you then. Bye.